Security and compliance is one area which is very important in the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. And is it important in just the AWS? No, of course, security and compliance are the base, are the core in other clouds as well. And lack of this concept, lack of understanding on this concept can really land you in trouble. So that's why my friends, today I've got some really important, really frequently asked questions in the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. So let's not wait any further and let's get on to the very first question for today. Here it comes. So let's begin the episode 40 with question number 276. Now the question is saying that which AWS service provides a comprehensive set of security and compliance focused resources for the customers. And plus this is going to be a really important episode for you because with each question you will understand a different aspect or different service from AWS related to the security aspect. So please watch this video very carefully and you will understand a lot about the AWS security services. Now let's look at the options given here. Option A, AWS Shield. Option B, AWS Artifact. Option C, AWS Secrets Manager. And Option D, AWS Directory Services. Okay, so now let me disclose the correct answer and that is Option B, AWS Artifact. And on this documentation, you can understand all about the AWS Artifact. So let me try to explain this one. So AWS Artifact, my friends, is a service provided by AWS that offers a comprehensive set of security and compliance focused resources for the customers. Now this service, my friends, it really provides you access to the various compliance reports, certifications, and other relevant documentation such as service organization control, SOC reports, payment card industry data security standard which is also popularly known as PCI DSS reports and then we also have many more similar kind of services similar kind of certifications that are provided under this concept here and also my friends AWS artifacts helps the customers understand and validate the security and compliance of their AWS environment. And as you can see here, the use cases of the AWS artifact. So here you can understand that this service you can use to understand the AWS security and compliance postures. Then of course, it helps you manage the security online agreements and also access the third party security and compliance. Moving on with the question number 277 that says which AWS service provides DDoS protection for web applications running on AWS. Your options are option A, AWS Shield. Option B, AWS Guard Duty. Option C, AWS WAF. And option D, AWS Inspector. And yes, I want to remind you that we keep on releasing QA series on various exam series. We also keep releasing videos on Gen AI, artificial intelligence. So please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and press that bell icon. And I can assure you that this will be value for your time. Okay, so pause the video for a moment, share your answer in the comment section below, and match up with the answer that I gave. So so the correct answer for this question is AWS Shield and we have taken multiple questions on AWS Shield. So please do check out previous episodes as well so that you can get a lot of questions, lot of variations of the question on this important concept here. Okay, so let me try to explain the AWS Shield concept. To start with, let's read the AWS documentation. It says that this concept, this AWS Shield helps you maximize application availability and responsiveness with managed DDoS protection. So basically, AWS Shield offers distributed denial of service DDoS protection for the web application running on the AWS. And also my friends, AWS Shield, it really helps you protect the application from DDoS attacks as I just said by providing automatic and continuous monitoring, detection and mitigations against such attacks. It also offers both standard and advanced tiers. So basically there are two tiers, standard and advanced. And these tiers helps you protect and meets the need of the different application and the environment. And then on the same documentation, of course, you can also understand how this AWS Shield works. So all is given in this diagram here. See, from the exam perspective, you just really be able to define the services. You understand the services, the use cases of the same. However, you need not to fully, you know, understand how the service works, what is the architecture. So this is advanced level questions and they will not appear in the cloud practitioner exam, but it's good to understand and be able to define the services. Moving on with the question number 278 that says, which AWS service helps the customer monitor and respond to the security events and potential vulnerabilities? Your options are option A, 
Amazon Inspector, Option B, AWS Secret Manager, Option C, AWS CloudTrail, and Option D, AWS Config. Okay, so the correct answer is option A, AWS Inspector. So let's check out this AWS Inspector new service, I guess for many of you. So here comes the AWS Inspector. And as you can see, this service, AWS Inspector, is an automated and continual vulnerability management at scale. And this really helps you as a customer to monitor and respond to the security events and the potential vulnerabilities in their AWS environment. And the best part is it automatically assesses the security and compliance of the application and the instances is identifying the potential vulnerabilities, security postures and deviation from the best practices. So really good service, AWS Inspector provides detailed findings, prioritized recommendation and also gives you sort of actionable insights to help the customer improve their security postures. And with that, let's move on to the next question, question number 279 that says which AWS service provides a managed intrusion detection system for AWS resources and your options are option A, AWS Guard Duty, option B, AWS Messy. I don't know what exactly is the correct pronunciation of this word here, but let's say AWS Messy. Anyways, moving on, option C, AWS Security Hub and option D, AWS Firewall Manager. So what do you think is the correct answer? Well, this one is option 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 a aws guard duty so let's understand and define the aws guard duty and here you can see as per the aws documentation this service helps you protect your aws accounts workloads and data with intelligent threat detection and once again the best part is that this service actually continuously monitors and analyzes the data from the various sources such as AWS cloud trail logs or maybe you can say VPC flow logs or DNS logs to detect any malicious activities and unauthorized behavior within your AWS environment. And friends, Guard Duty uses machine learning algorithms and the threat intelligence to identify the potential threats and compromised instances or the suspicious activities, helping the customers enhance security of their AWS resources. With that, let's move on to the next question, question number 280 that says, how should an Amazon EC2 instance access to an Amazon S3 bucket in accordance to the security best practices? So let's check out the options given. Option A. Hardcode an IAM user secret key and access key directly in the application and upload the file. Option B, store the IAM's user secret key and access the key into a text file on the EC2 instance, read the keys and then upload the file. And then we have option C that says have the EC2 instance assume a role to obtain the privileges to upload the file. Option D is modify the S3 bucket policy so that any service can upload to it anytime. I know all these options are very confusing. So maybe take your time, understand, pause the video, read them once again, try to understand what all these options are taking you towards. And honestly, my friends, that is how the questions are actually formulated in the real exam as well. So the options can be really confusing. The options can be really, you know, sort of nearby saying almost the same thing. So you will be really confused. Your mind will be really twisted. And that is the reason, my friends, I give you the documentation. I give you the examples, the analogy. And for now, let me tell you the correct answer. And that is option C, have the EC2 instance, assume a role to obtain the privileges to upload the file. And I'm sure that you really want to read and validate the answer of this question. And trust me, friends, it's not easy to find these kind of documentation. You really have to do a lot of research. So here is the documentation. Here you can see there is a question. It says, how can I grant my EC2 instance, Amazon EC2 instance, access to an Amazon S3 bucket? So once you read this entire documentation, you will be able to associate or link the answer that we have chosen. I hope you like the questions for today in case you have some doubt, some suggestion or maybe you want to cover some more questions on some particular aspect or some particular concept. Do let me know in the comment section and that's all for today. I will see you in the next video till then stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.